What's up creative people, I hope you're all having a great week. In this video you will learn how to customize your own zoom transition effects and achieve different looking transitions. If you're new here, my name is Danny James. Subscribe to the channel because I upload weekly tutorials. Give this video a like because it helps a lot on YouTube's algorithm so that other people like you are able to find this video. Now without further ado, let's jump right into it. On my timeline I have a couple of clips which I'm going to use to demonstrate how you can make these custom zoom transitions for yourself. I have this clip, I'll play it right here. And it's the same clip which I have duplicated uh, once, twice right here. So I'll show you a few methods. I hopefully you can learn something from this one. For the first zoom transition, we're going to use an adjustment layer. So come right here and add an adjustment layer. If you're using an older version of Adobe Premiere, go to File, New and Adjustment Layer should be right here. Also, if you need to select this, this option, you need to have clicked on the Project tab first and then it should appear now. Put it, drag and drop it. Now we need this adjustment layer to last for five, a total of 10 seconds. So right in between, I'll come right into the middle, hold shift, go to the left once, and that will take me five frames. Come again to the center, shift, arrow keys to the right, and now we have a total of 10 frames. Next, go to your effects, and if you cannot find your effects tab, go to windows, and ensure that effects is enabled want to search for a transform transform it should be under distort drag it and put it on the adjustment layer you also want to look for a blur now for this one i want us to use this specific blur a channel blur and then let's go to our effect controls uh, again before you can customize anything make sure the transform comes after the channel blur otherwise you'll run into some issues so let's alter the transform we'll come right into the middle and then we'll enable keyframes for scaling and right at the middle we want to zoom in so right here in the middle we want to put the scaling up to around 150 to 60. go at the end of the clip put it to zero so i'll reset the, this property and at the very beginning reset it back again it should look like this now another adjustment we need to do we need to have some sort of blur happening so i'll disable this use composition shutter angle and then set your shutter angle to around 180 degrees to get that smooth uh, blur sort of which you can find in a camera lens whenever you're shooting naturally yeah you see now we have this sort of blurriness happening now let's change the other properties for the channel blur basically the channel blur will enable us to blur specific colors so if we increase the value for reds to about 130 the transition will have this red pigmentation around the subject so it's sort of like a glow but not a entirely you can play around with these colors you can try another one let me try blue yeah you can see the blue sort of spots around the subject i think i was okay with the red or green so i'll bump up this value yeah so that's it you can play around with the colors you wish to and you can also enable repeat edge pixels so that's a really simple zoom transition now let's do something else right here on this other clip which is still the same clip now instead of adding an adjustment layer uh, we'll have to make a cut between these clips for this one so right into the middle of this transition i'll hold shift go to the right ones and then i'll make a cut i can you can hit ctrl k to make us a, a fast cut uh, alternatively you can use this razor tool to make that cut i'll come to the middle five frames to the left and then i'll use this razor tool come back to your selection tool highlight those two clips and then you can nest them we'll do the same thing go to our effects and look for a transform drag it on top of this clip let's alter these values first after that come to your effect controls disable use composition shutter angle and then put your shutter angle the one you feel like Anything above 180 degrees or 90 degrees should be fine. And then enable a keyframe for scaling. Come right into the middle of this transition. So I'm at the middle. I'll put it at around 160. 
and then come to this other side put it back to zero you can reset the parameter and then push that keyframe and then on this other side make sure it comes from 100 so that's very good now next we want to add an, a glow effect so i look for glow if you have access to some plugins i'm using the red giant universe i'll add this universe glow right here now i'll also link where you can download this especially for windows users it's very free and easy to install i'll link it down below in the description box don't forget to check it out it has so many options and you can see with the universe glow you're already having some good glow happening on the artist's t-shirts yeah i'll come back to my effect controls and i look at the properties for the universe glow if you want it to be a little bit more brighter you need to just add the intensity and I'll scroll it up just a bit. Now you can see this is a little bit stronger which is a good look. Let's preview this. If you feel like this transition happens for a very short amount of time, you can always increase the number of frames which you are going to cut out of these clips. In my example, I cut 5 frames from each. You can make that 10 each and have 20 frames into the middle of this nested sequence. So I hope that was straightforward. Now for the next way that you can customize your zoom transition, this time we'll use an adjustment layer. So we'll come back on this clip. It's just the same clip. Go to the project bin and then I'll basically I'll just copy this other adjustment layer. I'm holding Alt while scrolling and then i'll delete any other properties which is on this adjustment layer channel blur and the transform now we're going to start from scratch again we want to set it right into the middle hold shift go to the right ones to go five frames and if i put it here it's perfect now now let's go to our effect controls and look for the transform Again, if you're noticing a pattern where you're going to be using this transform adjustment a lot of times. And then again, search for a brightness and contrast. Now for this one, we're going, we are looking for a, a white sort of transition. If you don't have access to a plugin, this should be the right method for you. Go to your effect controls. Uh, and then do the same thing that we've been doing. Now let's go to our brightness and contrast, add a key, add a stopwatch for the brightness. Right in the middle, push this keyframe right here. Put the brightness at uh, some good quality level. Put it at 100. If we put it at 100 into the middle, on the left hand side, reset it back to zero. On this far end of the transition, again put it back to zero. Push that keyframe to the right. So the transition should go from this. To this brightness and as it zooms it comes back now again if you need some some more brightness into this one you can simply duplicate this by ctrl c ctrl v now we have the same effect happening again this one should be more intense yeah like that uh, that's a pretty good looking zoom transition and in case you you like more details you can add another blur so I'll look for first blur. Put it right here into the adjustment layer and just adjust these properties. You can see we are having these black edges. Maybe the first blur wants to be on top of the on top of these lists. Yeah, now it's okay whenever we have this first blur right at the top. Make sure to repeat edge pixels, add a keyframe for blurriness, put it to about 40 in the middle. In the very beginning, put it back to zero. Yeah, that's it. My computer is really struggling with all these keyframes, so I hope this turns out well. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, I feel like that uh, fast blur really adds a really good element into this overall glow. Now the last zooming transition that I'm going to show you that you can customize. I'm going to use a different clip this time round. So right in between, 
hold shift go to the right make a cut again i'm going to be repeating just the same thing i'll right click and then i'll also nest this let's give it a different color so that you don't get confused now i'll go to my effects tab and look for a lens distortion and then we're also going to add a fast blur and then we're also going to add one more property which is a gradient so i'll pick this four color gradient it's not a plugin so it should be in any in any software that you're using so let me disable the last effect first now let's work on these other ones i want for this lens distortion we'll go right into the middle of this transition right here into the middle of this nested sequence we're going to adjust this curvature and you, if you go towards the negative it zooms into this and if you go on this other side you'll have to find this field color so it's not a really good look but it's applicable in some areas not this one so we'll make sure to zoom into it at around 40 don't go too much it will be too much if you go past 70 it becomes this awkward thing so minus 40 and then we'll add this keyframe go a little bit to the beginning put it back to zero push that keyframe and again on this other side we're going to do the same for now we have this curvature happening it's it's not like a zoom but it sort of zooms in in a way so that's really good now let's go and change this other property for the first blur we're going to do the same thing we did on this other clip go into the middle of the clip sorry go into the middle make sure this property goes up to 40 and then reset it back to zero push that keyframe to the left hand side and also we're going to do the same thing on this side yeah now the last thing we're going to be adding is this four color gradient it will enable us to customize the color of this transition now you have a bunch of colors you can choose from first of all change the blending mode to something like a multiply screen or i want to go for a soft light so it's it's not really harsh and i can also reduce the opacity of this and then remember you can change any of these colors the way you want it and also where this color affects so you can see you have four regions point one two three four you can adjust where this point is so that your color can pop out the way that you want it so i i think i love the colors as they are i don't want this tutorial to be very lengthy i'll change just one two things I'll put again that yellow oh no that's not the best we need some contrast yeah so that's something else it looks quite unique if you ask me that's basically it i hope you've realized there are some things which are happening in common in, throughout all these transitions for the zooming i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any questions suggestions or query leave it down on the comment section and i'm happy to interact with you guys if you find this video useful kindly share it with your friends or anyone who is in the same field as you my name is danny james hope to see you in the next one cheers